Hey guys, Simply Betty here. So I know I said in my last video that my next video was going to be how I selectively choose betta fish and their traits for breeding and how I pick out the best ones in a spawn, what traits I look for and why. But I've been having a little problem editing lately. It's just, it's just been hard. Sitting down and editing has been almost impossible lately, but it's in the works. It should be like my next video. This is gonna be more of a fish room update because I have a lot going on. And if I don't just document what I'm doing, I'm probably never gonna share what I'm doing. So this is just more of a vloggy fish room update. In another recent video of mine, I explained how I've been having so much problems lately, especially with time management and with just managing all the things I have to do because I have a young child, I have a baby, I have a household, I have jobs, I have so much to do. And a fish room and videos and a YouTube channel and I'm just like a crazy person with all the things that I do. And I'd like to just thank everybody who left a nice message on that video where I was really struggling because it helped. And I've, al I've also implemented some of the tips that people have shared with me and some of Rachel O'Leary's tips that she shared with me and Tazawa Tanks. I've been doing a little bit better. I'm slowly getting back to normal and it feels good and I'm enjoying my fish room again and I'm enjoying my fish and I have new life in the fish room and I have a lot going on. So let's go take a look at it. My macrostoma spawned, which is great and all, except for my male just eats all of his eggs all of the time and I can't get him to stop. He is truly majestic with that big mouth full of eggs. That's my female. She's huge. I've named her Bertha. She's actually from Dean's fish room. On these wild species, the horizontal lines, those aren't stress stripes, those are breeding stripes. She's actually from Dean's fish room. Um, he sent her to me because his male died and he just had a lonely female, so he sent her to me to keep trying with, but it's really too bad that my male just keeps eating all of his eggs. I've been spawning guys and it feels really nice. It's been a while since I've had some nice spawns. These guys here are about four days old. I know it's hard to see because the fish are so tiny, but this is actually a pretty big spawn. There's a lot of little babies in here. And then same with this one over to the side. Both of these spawns are red fancies. Let's see the male here. He was a really pretty star tail, fancy red. I paired him up with a red female of mine. And in this one, he was a Hellboy fancy, which means he's a really cool, like black and red marble. And I paired him up with a, a red galaxy female who I thought was a really good match. So these guys are doing really well. I'm stoked. I can't wait to raise up some fish. I spawned the parents without a filter. Sometimes I do that without a sponge filter. And I'm, I'm gonna put some, some sponge filters in here today. What I've been doing the past couple days, I've been dripping out a mason jar of water just really slowly with an airline. And then I drip in a new jar of my aged water. And that's how I'm, I make sure there's not an ammonia spike because of the waste. I'll get some sponge filters in there today. These two tanks, they're currently kind of filled with algae. I need to give them a little cleaning. I'm gonna have a video about the species in there soon. Okay, I've separated out some of my white clouds into this tank. They're super cute, I love white clouds so much. Here are some males that I like, and in this super jungle tank, I have a couple of females, and I'm gonna have them separated for a few weeks. I'm trying to get the females nice and eggy so I can get some spawns out of my white clouds. My ultimate goal is to create a long, thinned, golden white cloud. There are two fish who I'm gonna pair up and hopefully get some eggs out of, and uh, I should be getting maybe something kind of close to a long finned gold. This is a beta chinoides male. Unfortunately, over the quarantine period, I lost the female. Um, I just found her belly up one morning and I don't really know why. I do have their fry growing out in the original tank and I moved him over here just to get him away from the fry so they could grow out in peace. Down here, it's a mess. They're Pretty ugly tanks sometimes. I don't always have the time to clean the algae off the glass. In this jungle tank right here, I have some beta mahachai growing out and there's some big males in here that I'm gonna separate out today. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't maintain plants. I've just been so busy that uh, a lot of my plants have just gone and totally overgrown the tanks. <laughs> they look really jungly in there, which is okay. I'm fine with that. So my tank rack might be filled with algae, but it's, it's doing pretty well. 
I'm pretty happy with it. I have a little project tank right here that I would like to work on pretty soon, but I just have to catch up with life first. That's the tricky part, is catching up with life. A couple videos ago, I was considering downsizing the rack, and I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm really trying to manage my time better, um, so it won't be as hard to maintain. But if, if I fail, I will be downsizing my tank rack. Now we're in the fish room. Let's get an update of what's going on in the fish room. It might be a little bit loud in here, sorry about that. I'm not gonna turn like my dehumidifier off or my fan or my pump just because it's a pain in the butt. Let's give an update on my recirculating rack. So far it's working really great. My rack is almost full right now. I have a bunch of fish growing out in it right now. I have some um, black dragon samurais. Down here I have some growing out half moons, a few miscellaneous blue females. Um, I have a bunch of males from a spawn of black dragon samurai more like black mamba types with really, really reduced uh, metallic dragon layer. But here are the offspring so far. I had I had to separate them because they were getting really aggressive. On my to-do list of fish room improvements, I actually have, I'm um, adding in some LED lights to the shelving system because right now it's kind of hard to see the fish. I have a hard time supporting plants. Like you, you can see I keep pothos in a bunch of these, but they don't do very well. I think I just need more light. That's on my to-do list is to put LED light strips that will not only illuminate the fish, but also give my pothos and plants a little more oomph so I can put more in. These guys are really pretty fish. Um, their daddy was a, a cool black dragon samurai, which is a black dragon like with kind of a reduced pattern. And then the mom was really cool. She was a, a helmet type, which is kind of like this beauty right here. This is my best male from the, from the fairly small spawn. I'll uncard him real fast. He's, look at that pattern on him. He's just gorgeous. I'm going to condition him to breed um, and hopefully create more of that really nice, come on, autofocus, that really cool helmet pattern. I know I'll get comments about it, but I do keep my breeding fish in a jar system. This is where I condition my males and my females. I get them ready for breeding is in um, large jars and it works really well. It's very time consuming. It takes a lot of energy to water change these jars. I do it every two days. Pain in the butt, so I don't really recommend it, but I do it. I know I have a lot of people hate that I do a jar system. Okay, to finish up on the rack, up here I have some yellow and black galaxy koi males that I'm growing out. It just makes me wish I had better lighting. Um, these guys are pretty much to where I would put them on my website. I'd actually take some nice photography and videography. This might be one of my keepers. I do have several of these guys, another small spawn, so I don't have a ton. And then up on the very top, I have a bunch of uh, Beta Mahachai females. Uh, that's just their place they're staying right now till I get them up on my website and I pair them up with some males. So all in all, I really like my recirculating rack. You'll notice it's fairly narrow. If I could build this again in a different space, I would make bigger jars. It wouldn't be quite as narrow. Like this is only a seven inch board. It's only seven inches wide because I'm not working with a lot of space. Like look, there's the door. The door has to open. I have to be able to walk past this little mini hallway thing and this. I just, I didn't have a lot of space when I made it. This is my garbage can sump. It's working pretty well. I have a bunch of biological media in there and like a tiered tray thing, um, kind of down there. It's not very exciting. And I've also been keeping media in my spare jars that I have a hard time getting to. Having this rack full of fish is actually pretty new. Like it was only half full before. So I added more media and I also dosed with, uh, with a bacterial culture too, to just make sure that I had enough bacteria to process all the, all the waste that all the new fish were making. But I think by now my bacteria has created its little happy ecosystem. I do a daily water change on this of about 50% and everything's going really well. I keep my fish carded most of the time so they can't see each other, just with some pretty colors of construction paper. And it works pretty well. I, I let them exercise one or two times a day by removing them and letting them flare at each other. It's good exercise. Making our way over to the sink area, one thing that's different from my last fish room update is that I added another shelf tier. Like I used to only have this shelf and I had a bunch of breeder fish on it that I condition like in their own jars. I added another shelf because I just really like having them all right there where I can see them and maintain them very easily and keep them very clean. This is another place that I would really like to add a little LED light up here. I do have these little 
uh, twist lights from the grocery store. But, you know, they work okay, I guess. I can kind of see my fish that way. But it's just not very appealing. And if I kept those LED lights, again, I'd be able to, to put more plants in here and they won't just die all the time. On my fish room improvement list, which, ah, see, these are too bad. They don't even turn off. Turn off! Ah! <clears throat> Anyways, I have a culture of microworms here. I have my amino acid supplement that I put on my pellets that I feed. Um, this is just like a cheap pellet I got off, got off of brine shrimp direct. I don't really have a favorite pellet. I have a little salt, my salt right there. Actually, my favorite pellet at the moment is probably this uh, Ocean Nutrition Addison Beta Pro. It's really good, but it's expensive, especially if I'm feeding the whole fish room with it. This here is my water change bucket. So I, I fill this up with water. I add my dechlorinator to it and my heavy metal remover. I add my um, salt to the bucket. I can age my water. I can let it circulate. I just kind of keep my water there. That's what I use to water change everybody. Here's a couple of my vinegar eel cultures. I keep a lot of vinegar eel cultures. I think vinegar eels are such a great food source to have if you're spawning little tiny fish. Kind of hard to see just with my camera the way it is without like a special lens, but do you see how cloudy that apple cider vinegar is and how there's like this little swirly cloud in there? It's actually full of tiny microorganism nematode wormy things called vinegar eels. And they're a really great food source for little baby fish, including baby betta fish. I feed these exclusively for the pet first couple days of a fish's life. In fact, I'll show you guys. I sell starter cultures on my website. You get the starter culture, you put it in a bunch of apple cider vinegar, and within like, maybe like three weeks, you'll have so many vinegar eels, you won't even know what to do with them all. We're gonna turn again. There's my little tool area where I keep a bunch of little things and whatnot. Then we start to get over into my grow out tanks. So on this shelf right here, which is built above where a toilet used to be, cause I'm literally working out of a spare bathroom. Look, there's the bathtub. I built shelves above it. Just working with what I have here. I have two 20 gallon long grow out tanks. Another one, there used to be another one there, but at the moment it's just right there temporarily. So yeah, up here, oh my goodness. Oh, Taylor, clean the glass. Clean the glass, clean the glass, people. Taylor. In here, I have a bunch of uh, red fancies growing out. This is the spawn of a really nice red galaxy male and a female, but they were unrelated. You don't really know what the genetics are gonna end up like in these, in these marble fancy type fish. So most of the spawn are kind of a bicolor, blue metallic and red, and we have some marbles. We have a little bit of more opaque. We have a little bit, of, oh, there's a beautiful one. I really like her, the marble. A big mix. Here are more of the spawn, the bigger guys that I separated because they grew out faster. Oh my gosh. Taylor, clean the glass. Clean the glass. I can hear it now. Okay. Fish rooms don't always look nice. <laughs> when, I, when I'm hustling, bustling, things just get messy. That's okay. Anyways, here's the big boys and girls, mostly uh, girls in here, of the same spawn. So if I were to take a sibling pair of this spawn, I should be getting some really nice red galaxies. And that's what I'm hoping. I just removed a male today. He's sitting up there in a little cup, just separated from his, his sisters who he was getting all mad at. So I have to give him his own nice big jar tonight. He's in timeout. Just casually cleaning the glass. This spawn over here, who's hard to get a good video of. These are the females left out of my black dragon spawn. The form isn't very hot on these guys. I feel like they're pretty spoon-headed, but I'm going to work with what I have and go for another generation and really try for the helmet colorations. There's more life in the fish room, not just on the fish rack, but I have a little tiny spawn in there. I have two nice big spawns in here and here. There's two five gallon tanks. This one I'm working on a black galaxy avatar. So a black fish with blue metallic bits all over it. This is gonna be my F2 growing out. And then in here, I've, I crossed another red galaxy male to a female. There's a whole lot of babies in there too. Here's a little planted tank of mine that I had a surprise spawn in between a yellow male and a gold female. And I do have some babies. Not a lot because the male ended up eating most of his spawn, but 
there are some. There's this big blue bucket down by my feet. I actually tried spawning in a bucket um, because of creative pet keeping. She had a video like a couple weeks ago maybe about doing a spawn in a bucket. And I know some people prefer this because it's of its round shape. They just feel like everything happens easier. Uh, this spawn was not successful, unfortunately. I have a really pretty male hiding in there somewhere. But the male and female, they didn't spawn and it, it became long enough to where I just, I removed them from each other. I'm gonna try this again in a bucket, but in a place where there's not quite as much foot traffic from me. It's possible that the spawn wasn't successful just because I had to come in here I fed and feed and work around the bucket. And it turns out, I just discovered, when I step like right here, right there or so, a board wiggles right there below them. So maybe I ruined it, I don't know. Also on this shelf, I have a really cool hybrid right here, hybrid male. And then I had a female, and I was going to try to spawn them in a naturalistic setting like this, and it ended up just not really working out. The male kept eating the fry. My female, I had her for months and months, or actually a really long time, and she started to slowly go downhill, um, which is kind of sad. And I removed her from the tank and I kept her, but during the coronavirus quarantine thing, um, I actually lost her, but I still have this lovely male and I paired him to a Mahachai female of mine. And, you know, they're getting along, they like each other, but I don't have any spawning yet. Here's a big bag of uh, floating pellets that I use to feed my grow outs. Down here I have a temporary bucket of red floaters. I really like red floaters, they're a really pretty floating plant. And so red, and I sell these on my website, these are just ones that I've put in there because I started to run out of space in my tank for all of my red floaters. Down here I have a row of 10 gallon tanks. I keep meaning to remove that one in the very corner because I can't really reach it. I usually use these as spawning or at grow out tanks for little tiny babies. Moving up, I have this divided 20 gallon long that I made a long time ago before I even had my baby. Only one fish is in there now. I keep meaning to disassemble it and put that 20 gallon back over here um, next to that 20 gallon long grow out. These fish right here are currently imports that I have for sale on my website. They went through quarantine, they're really pretty. I took photography of them. They're up on my website now if you're looking for a fish. I haven't really advertised them or anything. Very happy with them. And I've actually spawned a couple of them. I'm keeping some for myself. And that's where uh, some of these babies are coming from, are these new imports. I have some vinegar eels ready to feed right here. I harvested these by taking my apple cider vinegar cultures, pouring them just through a coffee paper filter just because it was easy at the moment, and then uh, rinsing it out, dumping it in a little container. And now I have tons of little tiny vinegar eels in water. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed this. And it's the same temperature as these little fry tanks. So let's see if I can get some shots of these tiny, tiny little babies eating some vinegar eels. These fish here are about three or four days old. You can see how tiny the vinegar eels are and why they make such a good first food. It's voracious swimming heads. So all my fry, both out here and on my rack system, they're about four days old. This is when I'll start adding microworms because it's a bigger prey item, sparingly though. And then I'll also start adding a little bit of brine shrimp, which I have bubbling and hatching right here. I'll feed by tonight. To feed microworms, I just have a little bit of water right here and I take a little pipette and I just, I scrape the side of my culture. Microworms start to climb up the wall of your culture as the culture grows, and you can just kind of swipe it up. Got some. I'll get a close-up shot of it. You can actually see all the little wiggly worms in there. They're bigger than vinegar eels, which is why I wait a couple days to feed these guys. Ooh, let's see if I can do this one-handed. I just squirt a little up in my pipette, and I uh, just squirt a little bit into the tank. Not a lot, since I just fed vinegar eels. Microworms sink to the bottom. They're, they don't swim in the water column like vinegar eels do. So that's a good thing. It's like now there's food on the bottom of the tank and on the top. Put some microworms in there, some microworms in there. 
Now I'm coming back out to the library rack. I'm going to feed these two big spawns their vinegar eels. I have my little cup in there acclimating to temperature to make sure the water I'm adding with the vinegar eels in it is the exact same temperature as the water that's in there. So I'm going to dump half in here. You see that swarm of tiny, tiny little nematodes? And this is a big spawn, so I'm going to add plenty to this one. These guys are fed pretty well now, but I'm also going to add a few squirts of the microworms. Oh. Bitey the toke gecko can sense that I'm out here ignoring him and not feeding him. Or he's just flirting with his girlfriend. It could be that too. I probably just overfed a little, so I'm just going to plop some snails in. I don't think I put any snails in here yet. Totally put snails in your spawn tanks because they're going to eat up a bunch of leftover food that, that the babies don't eat, and that's that much less waste, which might pollute the water. Man, it is hot in my fish room. That's how I keep all my jars at the proper temperatures. I heat the fish room, but... <sighs> You can probably tell that I really enjoy having live food cultures around for my animals. Let me show you grindle worms. Here's an example of how I keep grindle worms. I like to keep my grindle worms on a sterilized potting soil. Um, these are a really great food source to feed growing fry juvenile fish. They're a great size for it. They're high in protein. They're easy to keep. I would highly recommend getting yourself a culture of grindle worms. Like, look at all these things. I usually just scrape them up with my finger, um, or I put a piece of plastic down. They'll attach to the plastic in a few minutes, and I'll just dunk the plastic in. They're easy to keep. I just feed mine dog food, most for the most part, high-protein kibble. I usually have cultures of these for sale on my website, but they go pretty fast. The last worm culture that I keep is called white worms, and I love white worms. So the lighting's kind of bad, I'll try to show you guys, but um, with a mature culture, you can get these beautiful clumps of these really, really awesome high protein worms that are easy to keep. They thrive in cool temperatures. Like this is a pure mass of worms. I can feed my entire fish room, maybe with this gross little mass right here. And I usually just keep a little container of water to put those in, and maybe I'll grab one more gross little mass. This will feed everybody. I usually feed my white worms a dog kibble, or maybe like a whole wheat bread with some yogurt on it, or nutritional yeast. Here's another culture that I started that's really starting to mature. You can see these guys just these huge clumps of these beautiful white worms eating that dog food. I love it. White worms really thrive in cooler temperatures. Um, these are out in my garage just because it's pretty cool out here. It usually doesn't get above like maybe 73, 74 or so. In fact, I haven't been selling these, these this summer because I'm kind of afraid of shipping them in warm temperatures. I did buy a pack of cold packs. Like these are little tiny three ounce cold packs that I could freeze. Maybe I'd be able to send them in the warmer or hot temperatures and keep them safe so people can get them during the summer. I might be experimenting with this a little bit and use like an insulated box or an insulated pack because I wanna get these delicious little worms out there. They're so easy to keep. I'm back in the fish room and here's my container of white worms and I just use my pipette to suck up and then feed them to my various fish. There's a young giant who I love very much. I can't wait to spawn once he gets a little bit bigger. Julie, take care of my fish. I just fed everybody. Now I'm starting the water change on the grow out rack. I do about 50% every single day. And actually what I do is in the sump bucket, oops, got to put my very high tech plastic wrap back on. This just helps keep the humidity down in my fish room. I'll pump this mostly empty and then I'll replace the water. That's how I do my water change on all of these fish. And then every couple days I'll take a hose and I'll actually go through and I'll remove all the debris on the bottom of these grow out jars. So at all times, all of these fish have warm filtered water and their debris is being taken out on a pretty consistent basis. I just pump it right into my sink and then I fill it up again. While that's emptying, I'm going to siphon with this little air hose I have. I'm going to siphon some of the debris from the bottom of my little fry tanks. Um, not all that much, but I just want to get some of that out there and then I'll add in maybe an inch of new water. Now I'm filling the reservoir back up with tap water and then I'm just going to put in an appropriate amount of my dechlorinator. 
that I use for everything. That's why I have such a big container of it and it's like almost gone. Okay, I just finished siphoning off maybe half of a mason jar worth of water out of each one of these little fry tanks, just taking debris off of the bottom, being really careful about what I was sucking up though so I didn't get any fry. Now I'm putting a whole mason jar of fresh aged water back into the tanks. I'm just gonna raise the water level a little bit, um, especially because it's evaporated a little bit and my, my sponge filters aren't covered fully anymore. And every day I'll just start adding a little more, a little more, a little more fresh water until this tank gets filled all the way up. I'm dripping it in, by the way, in a pretty slow rate. This is a little uh, control valve where I can actually control the rate of the drip. So it's getting a little bit late now. I'll also do the same thing on the two tanks that are out in the library and slowly raise that water level every day. God, I gotta get some sponge filters in there. I forgot to do that tonight. Sometimes I just don't have time to do everything. While all the water's dripping in, I think I'm gonna go goof off. You gotta goof off every now and then. So I was goofing off and enjoying myself and I realized I forgot to water change my grow out tanks, which are these tanks here. Usually I give them like a daily, about 30 to 50% water change. So I'm gonna do that real fast. Now all my chores are done and I can finally relax tonight. Actually, one last thing that I did tonight was I took that male who I had cupped up on the upper shelf, the one that I took out of his spawn, and I put him onto my grow rack. So here he is and then I'm gonna just put a little sticker with his spawn number to make sure I, you know, in two weeks I remember who he is. He's a handsome boy. Thanks so much for watching this fish room update, guys. I've decided that at the end of my more vlog type videos, I'd like to start doing something new. I'd like to start supporting other people in the community, people who I watch. I don't watch as much YouTube as I used to, uh, mostly just because of the new little baby and my time just being so uh, tight. But I do still watch occasionally and I feel like I have to catch up on a lot of people's videos who I used to really enjoy following. I used to know everything that was going on with everybody from like the, the big channels, the medium channels, the little channels, just because I was so interested in the community. But I've definitely fallen behind and I want to catch up again. And in doing so, I want to be able to share the people who I enjoy watching and maybe you guys could go show them some love. I have a list of people who I enjoy watching. The first person who I'm going to highlight is Flip Aquatics. The person mainly behind the Flip Aquatics channel is Rob. Rob's channel, the Flip Aquatics channel, is about shrimp, about ornamental shrimp, about cherry shrimp, neocaridinia shrimp, and caridinia shrimp, and this shrimp, and that shrimp. And it's just, everything's shrimp. And I like shrimp so much. I, I want to dive into owning some shrimp, but I know I need to catch up a little bit in my life before I get shrimp. This has been something I've been wanting to do for like six months, is make this beautiful custom tank that I'm like half done with it. And it's been like that for months and months now. And Rob from Flip Aquatics is the person who's kind of inspired me to want to keep shrimp or try shrimp. So I'm highlighting Rob because I like his channel. He's or such a nice guy. I've met him multiple times. He's so enthusiastic. Do you think I'm enthusiastic? Do you think I'm enthusiastic about what I enjoy? Because you should meet Rob. He's a super helpful guy. He's even been a sponsor of my channel. So I am gonna go binge watch a bunch of Flip Aquatics right now. This evening while I'm editing my own video and I'm just gonna put him up on my TV and watch Flip Aquatics. So I'm just gonna catch up with what's going on at Flip Aquatics. My fish room is actually, the door is right next to this giant TV. So I'm just gonna be hanging out tonight doing some chores and watching some Flip Aquatics and catching up a little bit. Have a nice day guys. I'll see you next time.